an ordinary Goomba and a run-of-the-mill Koopa, a team that no one thought would make it big. But these two have proven themselves stars time and time again, bringing with them a colorful cast of characters who had up until then never found themselves in the spotlight of the Super Mario universe. But it has been a rough path for the duo. Life off the screen was harsh. This is the untold story of Bowser's Kingdom, behind the scenes. Alright, so what are we doing here? It's an interview. Just tell us about the show. Oh, um, I, I don't know where to start. Tell us about things that happened when the cameras were off. Oh, I don't know, like, we ate food and stuff, and then we went home after filming, if that's what you mean. Tell us something about the show. Well, for the most part, working with the people around here sucks. How so? Well, for starters, it's a total sausage fest. I mean, sure, once in a while Princess Peach or Wendy Koopa will show up, but whenever I try to talk to them, they just ignore me like I'm nothing but a fungus or something. But... You are a fungus. Ow, man. I've heard that all my life. What do people have against me? Yeah, Jeff is in complete denial that he's a fungus. I've tried telling him that a Goomba is just a bad mushroom, but he just won't listen to me. Yeah, I pretty much ignore everything Hal says. This one time, I had my arms full with the cast scripts, and he could clearly see me struggling, and he just wouldn't help. What the fuck does he expect? Does it look like I have arms? How the hell could I help? Ever since the show's success, he's starting to become a snob, just like the inaudible thwomp. Hey, let me tell you something, I got tired right now, we saw the show, I saw the show, I saw the show, I saw the show, these guys here, you know, they just don't, they just don't respect me at all. You know, it's like I didn't go to 10 years of voice acting school just to learn how to yell, they better show some respect, I tell ya. He totally went to 10 years of acting school just to learn how to yell. Yeah, you know, it's hard to keep order with such a large cast of characters. We've had a few incidents in the past. Hey, a banana. I love bananas. I don't know why that ape hit me. All I wanted was a banana. And then we had a few politically correct errors. Hey look, all I'm saying is, I brought bagels for everyone to enjoy, and you're not sharing. Sharing? Sharing? Please, you know I would share if there was something to share. What is this stuff? You call this a bagel? This is no bagel. A bagel is toasted and loaded with schmear. How can you say this is a bagel? You have no locks. Ah, uh, damn Lakitos! You know, I don't even understand some of these stereotypes against us. I mean, come on, Lakitos control all the media? These kind of things are unjust and just plain ignorant, if you ask me. Look, I know what I said was wrong, and I'm sorry if I offended anybody out there who was Lakito-ish. Just know that it was a simple mistake and nothing to throw hammers about. He was lucky that I didn't have any hammers at the moment. But the worst incident happened after we made episode 4 and got the reviews in. Back then, we just had a new character added. His name was Lemmy. A little jittery, but he was a cool guy. <sighs> I guess he just couldn't handle criticism. Hmm. Well, let's check out this review. Lemonator said it was good, but needed plot and character development. It was good, but it's not the Fresh Prince. Little did we know that poor Lemmy idolized the Fresh Prince. He always wanted to be like Will Smith and tried his best. He was good, just not Fresh Prince good. <sighs> I miss you, Lemmy. A lot of fans have noticed that your most recent episodes do not have subtitles in them. Why is that? Well, it all started after episode 7. You see, the TV that the Karate Duo broke with the Wiimote was actually the TV that was in the subtitle writer's lounge. I couldn't find a prop television, so I just took theirs. Yeah, they were pretty pissed, and they demanded that we buy them a new television for their lounge. But you know, who cares? You know, they're just subtitle writers. I mean, you know, what are they going to do? They flipped us the bird and quit. So, we were forced to complete the next episode without subtitles. I didn't think it would matter that much. 
but I was wrong. Dead wrong. You know, I thought I was right, but I was wrong. Dead wrong. Stop doing that! Screw you, queer. Anyway, a bunch of fans were upset about not having the subtitles, so we were forced to negotiate with the subtitle writers about episode 9. But this time they wanted a brand new Plasma HD TV for their lounge. I don't even have one of those. How actually doesn't get paid? So there were arguments and fights broke out, so the new deal never made through, and we lost almost all the subtitle writers. Only one stayed with us, but he would only write the subtitles for Bowser's lines or anyone else who can't speak. But unfortunately, he's still a little pissed about not having a television in the lounge. I mean, we gave him a brand new radio to use. Hey, wait a second. Hey, I'm not saying that. No, they're not. What? You see, you see, this is why we don't negotiate with these immature assholes. How is he doing this? Don't pay attention to what that says. I knew you were gay. Sometimes I really, really hate this place. Now, with all of this popularity, one would think that you guys would totally sell out and make, like, t-shirts. Why haven't you? Is it because you're going on the moral high road? Oh, God, no. We totally want to sell out, but we can't. Stupid copyright laws won't let us. Some Japanese guy thinks he owns us. I mean, come on. Check out this prototype. Look, it's an 8-bit Steve saying, Hi, guys. That's money in the bag right there. Who wouldn't want that? Hi, guys? What does that mean? That's your catchphrase, Steve. That's not my catchphrase, stupid. Of course it is. You say it all the time. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never said that. My catchphrase is, who to take all the ketchup? You've never said that. Ever. Oh, what do you know? So, I think all in all, that no matter what has happened to us, that we had a fun time doing this. It was never about the money, the fame, the imaginary women, or the imaginary money. It was all about making a show that people would like and would get a few laughs out of it. And that is all that matters to us. And I believe that nothing has changed. We are still the same guys we are before the show, just two regular guys trying to live modest lives. I am God. Ah!